And so now we turn to the gospel lesson for this morning. Uh, you will sound familiar from the children's version I just read. It comes to us from the gospel of Luke, chapter 1, beginning with verse 26. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel is sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greeters, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by these words and wondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative, Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who is said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And then Mary said, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And then the angel departed from her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Oh, oh God, your word falls upon us this morning. It falls upon our hearts and our heads and our spirits. And so open us up to a new yes in our lives. Uh, help us respond with love. Amen. Over the past month or so, you have seen announcements on the screen and in your messenger about our Advent study, The Heart That Grew Three Sizes, Finding Faith in the Story of the Grinch. And uh, we're now moving into our third week of that study with two different groups. It is written by a pastor uh, out of uh, Nashville. His name is Matt Rawl. I've always loved the story of the Grinch ever since I was a kid. I loved the rhythmic uh, nature of the text and its surprisingly happy ending. And so when Jen Ashball pointed out to me that there was going to be this Advent study on it, I bought it right off. And before even looking at it, I decided, oh, this will be the study for this year. I thought I would love it, and I have come to. But when I first got the book and I watched the videos accompanying it, I was a little thrown off. Matt Rawl wasn't, well, he was talking and writing about the Christmas story, as I knew it, but about something more. I was expecting all the lessons to be about what I call the Christmas story, you know, Mary, Joseph, the baby, shepherds, wise men. But then I got into this study, and Matt Rawl was talking about prophets, and witness that came from the Hebrew text into the moment of Mary's yes. In the very first chapter, and I brought along my book, um, in the very first chapter, all of a sudden, um, Matt Rawl is, is quoting Isaiah, but not the loving parts that, that I want to hear. Not, oh, behold, the child shall come, but, but these kind of words. We've all become like one who's unclean, and all of our righteous deeds are like filthy cloth. Oh, come on. That doesn't sound like Christmas. But wait, then there's more. And he, and he goes on to, in that same chapter, to, to share words from the prophet Amos. And he says, I, these are the words of God to the prophet Amos. I hate, I reject your festivals. I don't enjoy your joyous assemblies. Take away the noise of your songs. I won't listen to the melody of your harps. But, but, let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like the ever-flowing stream. 
What? What does this have to, what does this have to do? What does this have to do with Christmas? What Rawl tells us in this very first chapter is that these words, how can it be, are rooted, that, that Mary offers are rooted in the prophets, in words that she would have known as the favored one of God being raised in a Jewish household. That Mary's words echo those words of Hannah, the mother of Samuel, when she gives thanks for the birth of him and for his promised leadership. Rawl says these words echo this questioning, echoes the words of Jeremiah the prophet, who said, oh Lord God, truly, I, I can't do this. I can't speak. I'm only a boy. Rawl reminded me, reminds us in our group, that this Jesus story, this one that we claim this morning and this season, is big and broad and deep, and it is more than just a story about a sweet baby. It's a story about God. God whose uh, call on our lives from the beginning to the end to be free, to live out the lives that he's created us to live into. To be hopeful and loving and peaceful and joyful and just. This story reminds us as it unfolds in some parts that we'll get to in our study that I've never thought about before about that the wise men coming from the east he says represents the salvation of Babylon, of people that the Jews would have thought long ago had been abandoned. That the Holy families fleeing into Egypt is also a story of salvation for that whole people. For God so loved who? The world. The world. This is a story about the angel Gabriel's announcement to Mary. You found favor with God. You're beloved. You're the beloved one, Mary. You are loved by God. And Mary's questioning. And then the angel's answering. And then Mary's yes. Mary's yes that is rooted in love. Matt Rawl will talks about this in the third chapter of our study. And he says this, Mary is thrust into the unknown. Not unknown in the sense that she wasn't aware of what was being asked of her, but rather, as often is with the case of love, Mary is given few guarantees. You know that beautiful Christmas song, Mary, Did You Know? Mary, Did You Know? Mary, Did You Know? Maybe not everything, right? Of course not everything. Any of us who are parents know we don't know how our lives or our child li lives will unfold. But Mary did know. Mary did know that this child that she was to give birth to was the Son of God, was the Holy One that had been promised. And because she did know, because she did know, that she had found favor with God and that this one that she would bear was the Holy One, she was free to love. We know, I look out at all of you, and knowing so many of your stories, we know this, that love doesn't mean that everything will work out the way we plan. Love doesn't mean there won't be suffering or hardship or guarantees of a good life. But love never tires of making sure that we know that we are valued and that we are precious and that we are God's own. So with Mary, with Mary, we recognize this morning that we are beloved and that because we are, there is a call on our lives to love. So as we move into this uh, season, as we move closer, as we accept God's call on our life, let us, um, let's just pause here for a moment of prayer and offer our own yes, if so moved. Let us pray. Oh God, it is hard sometimes to accept that we are loved. 
that we have found favor with you because we see ourselves as limited, as sinful, as broken, and yes, we are. But more than that, this morning, like Mary, like Mary, we affirm that everything is possible in terms of love, and that because we have been so loved, we can go forth in this season to love. Accept this morning our yes. Our big, bold yes. To know that we are loved and to go forth to be loving. Amen. Amen.